Great Moments in Seahawk History. Former Seahawk great David Michael Craig was not a large man. His listed height was six feet, one inch tall, but that was clearly a lie meant to confuse and befuddle the opponent when they would be surprised on game day to find they were actually playing a certified dwarf. In addition to his limited stature, Dave had matchstick legs, thin short arms, a frail back, tiny hands, and a baby's penis. Despite these glaring weaknesses, Dave somehow managed to become one of the NFL's better quarterbacks of the 1980s. Mudbone, as he was known, came out of nowhere to kick Hawk legend Jimmy Zorn to the curb with ease, and the Seahawks didn't miss a beat. He went on to multiple Pro Bowls, captained the Seahawks to a couple of playoff appearances, and even one year, almost nearly made the Super Bowl. November 11th, 1990 was perhaps the day Craig's star shined the brightest, but it also marked the beginning of the end with his time with the Seahawks. The Scene Arrowhead Stadium, Kansas City, Missouri. A crisp 35 degree game time temperature had the players in long sleeves never straying too far from the sideline heaters. Already one of the toughest places to play in the league, the Chiefs were good and their fans were rocking the stands that day. The game began, and right off the bat, Dave knew he was in for a very, very long day. It came in the form of the original Vaughn Miller, Hall of Fame outside linebacker Derek Thomas. Six foot three, 255 pounds of sinewy muscle in a cheetah's get off, this quick twitch specimen quickly became the NFL's new pass rushing prototype. The Seahawks' offensive line that day was unprepared for defensive coordinator Bill Cowher's blitz packages, which saw Craig under duress from the opening drive. You had to believe the hot coaches knew they were in trouble, as they called four straight running plays and two swing passes to begin the game. But you could only run for so long from big bad Mr. Thomas. The first broken play of Craig's House of Horrors began when the Chiefs defensive tackle Dan Saliamua pushed the Seahawks center into Craig's lap, forcing him into the waiting arms of Thomas, who pancaked Craig to the turf like he hadn't had enough breakfast that morning. It only got worse from there. Another play and down goes Craig. He's woozy, he's seeing stars. Block that SOB, he yells, but there is no answer for Thomas and the Chiefs' rampant casino blitzes make it impossible to double-team him. Again, he fires off the edge like he was shot out of a cannon, and down Craig goes into a heap. He's wondering now, bleeding, muttering. Surely this must be a dream or a nightmare. He asks his lineman, Andy Heck, to pinch him, and when it hurts, he wonders out loud why Andy can't seem to remember how to block today. Back out onto the field, Craig valiantly went again. Coach Chuck Knox tried his best to protect Dave, calling only running plays, but no yards were to be found. Nothing was working. The Hawks end up in third and long. They have to pass. Craig looks over at Derek. Please, sir, not another. Derek just smiles and licks his lips. The ball is snapped. Derek quickly converts speed to power and sends Andy Heck flying past Craig's ear hole. Down he goes again, and again, and again, and again. And now you might be wondering why this is a great moment in Seahawk history. This team wasn't particularly good, finishing third place in the division this season. Hall of Famer Steve Largent was out most of the year with a very serious injury. And soon, legendary coach Knox would be resigning. 
The greatness, dear friends, is in the finish. Late in the fourth quarter, the Hawk defense pulls off another heroic stop, bringing down the Nigerian nightmare that is Christian Nkoye just short of the first down marker. Dave Mudbone Craig took the ice off his jaw, snapped back on his helmet, ordered the trainer to pop his dislocations back into place, and retook the field. Four seconds remained. The Hawk offense stood at the 45-yard line of the Chiefs. Craig was back in shotgun, and he knew what this meant. Thomas would pin his ears back and be in Craig's kitchen before he even got home with the groceries. The ball was hiked, and Craig's eyes were not moving downfield through his progressions, but affixed firmly to that demon from hell that was blazing a trail of fire on his way to the quarterback. But because Craig was watching him, he knew just the angle Thomas was taking. Thomas closed the distance almost instantly. This was going to be as easy a sack of the night. And just as he wrapped his big mitts around Dave's waist, Craig gave him that old hula hoop hip flip and sent Thomas careening to the arrowhead turf. Rolling to his left and blessed with only a 50-yard arm, Dave decided to make the toughest throw an NFL quarterback can make. Back across his body and into the middle of the field. And not just the middle of the field, but the end zone and for game. Thomas had recovered from his missed sack and was bearing back down on Craig, literally on all fours, frothing at the mouth. Dave gave him a tiny little middle finger and then let rip a spiral that would have made Joe Montana proud. In that second, former U Dub alum Paul Scancy morphed into Julian Edelman high-pointing the ball to steal it away from three chief defenders. Game over, Seahawks win. Until Russell Wilson came along, it was probably the best all-time Hawk finish. So here's to you, old mudbone from Colgate College. For our Seahawks that day, you took a nine-sack beating on AstroTurf and still came back out for more. God may not have granted you the most physical of gifts, but he gave you enough grit to put John Wayne to shame. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for watching Great Moments in Seahawk History.